Hello, Reverend Crystal Cox here. I bet you can already guess that it was me. I think I'm funny. <coughs> All right. Well, I'm going to read to you. Mm-hmm. <coughs> First, I'm going to cough, and then I'm going to this, and then I'm going to that. <laughs> oh, remember, if you don't like it, or you think I'm a dork, you know, shut it off. Okay, events themselves are impersonal and indifferent. So, don't take to heart every event that happens worldwide or locally. Every morning, well, I use the Raymond Grace techniques, but I remove any energy that is non-beneficial to me. I remove any energy from the mass consciousness that might have affected me. So, if you're sensitive, and most light workers and spiritual seekers are, the the more you are awakened, the more sensitive you are to global events. And when you wake up sad or mad or whatever, I mean, because, you know, with the time zone, it's always daytime somewhere, right? It's always nighttime somewhere. There's always something going on. So something that's going on that's affecting you, you have to clear that energy every single day. Because, you know, sometimes you'll just be grieving. You have no idea why. All right. When considering the future, remember that all situations unfold as they do, regardless of how we feel about them. Our hopes and fears sway us, not events themselves. So that also goes along with, you know, perception. Whatever our life experience is kind of just says what we view an event to be. Um, it's interesting with what's going on in the United States right now, seeing people's perspective, their religious beliefs, how they grew up, what race they are, uh, whether or not they've had the same kind of things happen to them or not, their perspective really does um, affect what fear it brings up in them, you know, what triggers. And it's hard to sit back and have faith and know that the Great Spirit has it, you know, that this is covered. This is not something that we need to sit and cry about or worry about or stress about but we feel grief and we feel all of this pain and if we realize that we just neutralize that energy because it's not really ours and trust in the great spirit and in that we say you know prayers and try to raise vibration and send light and and i do the hupono pono <laughs> pronounce it wrong stuff on what did i do what did i do or my ancestors do to create this and i work on healing that and um so just remember that they're events, they're not necessarily, um, well, events themselves are impersonal and indifferent. When considering the future, remember that all situations unfold as they do, regardless of how we feel about them. Our hopes and fears sway us, not events themselves. Undisciplined people driven by their personal sympathies and antipathies are, <laughs> for some reason that word is <laughs> weird to me, are forever on the lookout for signs that build up or reinforce their unexamined views and opinions. Right, we're all looking for ways that validate our beliefs. Yet events themselves are impersonal. Though judicious people certainly can and should respond to them in beneficial ways. Instead of personalizing an event, this is my triumph that was his blunder or this is my bitter misfortune, the parentheses there, and drawings, withering conclusions about yourself or human nature, watch for how you can put certain aspects of the event to good use. Is there some less than obvious benefit embedded in the event that a trained eye might discern? Pay attention, be a sleuth. Perhaps there is a lesson you can extract and apply to similar events in the future. In all events, however, seemingly dire, there is nothing to prevent us from searching for its hidden opportunity. It is a failure of the imagination to not do so. But to seek out the opportunity in situations requires a great deal of courage. For most people around you will persist in interpreting events in the grossest terms. Success or failure, good or bad, right or wrong, these simplistic polarized categories obscure more creative and useful interpretations of events that are far more advantageous and interesting. The wise person knows it is fruitless to project your hopes and fears onto the future. The o this only leads to forming melodramatic representations in your midst, in your mind, and wasting time. At the same time, one shouldn't passively 
acquiescence to the future and what it holds. Simply doing nothing does not avoid risk, but heightens it. There's a place for prudent planning and for making provisions for situations to come. Proper preparation for the future consists of forming good personal habits. This is done by actively pursuing the good in all the particulars of your daily life and by regularly examining your motives to make sure they are free of the shackles of fear, greed, and laziness. If you do this, you won't be buffeted about by outside events. You'll be you know, sure in yourself. Uh, if you examine your belief systems or when something comes up for you, you examine why do I believe that? What really is my belief in this moment on that topic? Because a lot of times we're just coming from old patterns and programs that aren't even ours. Train your intentions rather than fooling yourself into thinking you can manipulate outside events. If you are helped by praying or medita meditating, by all means do so. But seek divine counsel when the application of your own reason hasn't yielded any answers. Then you have exhausted other means. And of course, you know, when you're praying for help, guidance, divine intervention, angels to help you, then you, um, you're looking for signs, you're looking for validations, and you're also examining what comes up in you. You know, the thoughts, the ideas, that comes, um, in my opinion, from the Holy Spirit, from the divine. As long as you're clearing old patterns and it's not just coming up from old pattern reactions. What is a good event? What is a bad event? There's no such thing. What is a good person? The one who achieves tranquility by having formed the habit of asking on every occasion, what is the right thing to do now? Okay, so this next one's about events too. Events don't hurt us, but our views of them can. Right, so we're, if we're taking a certain viewpoint on an event, we are... Um, instead of just letting it flow through us, you know, so we're kind of blocking it, we're analyzing it, we're letting it mess with our life, and if we don't really hold an opinion of the event, we just it'd be like, well, you know, it happened, and um, whatever lesson we need to learn, how we can maybe react better next time, or to just kind of let it flow, ebb and flow. And to me, that doesn't mean do nothing, or ignore, be oblivious. Um, I believe in standing up for justice, standing up for other people, but at the same time, I also believe that, oh, I got an itch, <laughs> must mean something. I also believe that we are proactive in prayer, we stand up for other people and we voice our concerns, but at the same time, we also have faith in events playing out as they should. I know that kind of sounds the opposite because if you want to just trust that something's going on, well, you just let it go on and you don't interfere. But I always try to pray for the best in a situation, neutralizing any negativity. And I've been doing the methods of what is my part in this? What is my ancestors' part in this? What to do to heal this in effort to raise the vibration of Mother Earth and her people? Okay, so events don't hurt us, but our views of them can. Things themselves don't hurt or hinder us, nor do other people. How we view these things is another matter. It is our attitudes and reactions that give us trouble. Therefore, even death is no big deal in and of itself. It is our notion of death, our idea that it is terrifying, that terrifies us. There are so many different ways to think about death. Scrutinize your notions about death and everything else. And death is a big one because um, once you come to terms with death and not, death not really existing and you're just going to sleep and not waking up, there's really nothing to fear, right? And a lot of times people fear death. Um, I know a lot of people who fear suffering worse than death, but the thing is is that um, if you really put your intentions out there and you really have faith, then you won't worry about death and you won't worry about suffering. It is hard to do. It's something that we strive for every single day or you know, I do. I strive to be a better, clearer me every single day, and my situation is unique in the way that I don't have kids and a regular job, and I don't have, um, or I'm driving somewhere every day, I don't have a constant distraction outside of myself. I'm constantly facing myself, constantly processing, constantly doing things with myself, and I've always had my own business, I've always been free to do that, and so in that, I spend a lot of time, um, you know, sometimes you don't really face all that until the kids, you know, when I'm single, so you, the kids are gone, and then, you know, the parents, they hit a point where they, they're like, well, who are you? Because they've been so distracted 
for like 20 years. And um, so basically, you know, learning who you are and having, um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it happens. Okay. Therefore, even death is no big deal in and of itself. It is our notion of death, our idea that it is terrible that terrifies us. There are so many different ways to think about death. Scrutinize your notions about death and everything else. Are they really true? You still believe them now. Are they doing you any good? Don't dread death or pain. Dread the fear of death or pain. What's that saying about you cross so many bridges before you even get there? Stop worrying. Just deal with what's in front of you. We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. And I, I believe that we choose in the way that we um, create our reality, you know, we visualize what we want, we pray about it, we clear the path for it, but at the same time, we, we keep saying, like I myself, you know, you clear a certain way, but then you're like, well, but why isn't it here yet? So there's only so far you can do um, I've learned and I've changed that belief. I used to think I could totally create my own reality and I have in essence. But the next level of it, um, I can't hit that next level of it until I'm ready. And the Holy Spirit decides that, the fates, you know, the sister fates. Okay, focus on your main duty, this one's called. There is a time and place for diversion and amusement, but you should never allow them to override your true purposes. If you were on a voyage and the ship anchored in a harbor, you might go ashore for water and happen to pick up a shellfish or a plant. <laughs> be, but be careful. Listen for the call of the captain. Keep your attention directed at the ship. It's a wonderful, wonderful metaphor, right? So we're focused on our purpose and sometimes we go to the movie or we'll go out for lunch, we go to the bar or we go do something that um, is for fun or entertainment or distraction, but we have to focus on the ship and the captain calling, which is our guide, our inner guidance, our higher self, you know, the Holy Spirit. Getting distracted by trifles is the easiest thing in the world. Should the captain call, you must be ready to leave those distractions and come running without even looking back. If you are old, do not go far from the ship or you might be able to appear when you are called for. In other words, if you're old, you better stay close to I don't even know what that part meant, but the point is, is, you know, death too, being the ship. So when they call, they call. Be ready. And, and don't worry about it, you know. Make full use of what happens to you. Every difficulty in life presents us with an opportunity to turn inward and to invoke our own inner resources. The trials we endure can and should introduce us to our strengths. Prudent people look beyond the incident itself to seek to form the habit of putting it to good use. So you have to, you actually have to, you know, create a habit. And sometimes you have to force that for the first few times, first few days. On the occasion of an accidental event, don't just react in a haphazard fashion. Remember to turn inward and ask what resources you have for dealing with it. Dig deep. You possess strengths you might not realize you have. Find the right one and use it. If you encounter an attractive person, then self-restraint is the resources needed. <laughs> I'm not so sure I agree about that one. I have so much self-restraint that I can't even... <clears throat> okay, well, I get that. That's maybe biblical or resisting the sin of an attractive person. I don't know. Okay, if pain or weakness, then stamina. If verbal abuse, then patience. As time goes by and you build on the habit of matching, the appropriate inner resources to each incident, you will tend to not get carried away by life's appearances. You will stop feeling overwhelmed so much of the time. Well, there's that. Oh, here's a good one. Avoid adopting other people's negative views. Other people's views and troubles can be contagious. What you put into your mind, you know, who you hang out with, what you think, what you do, what you watch. Which is why I personally don't get, you know, people that they have to work and then they got their kids stuff and then they got bills and then they got um, shopping and they go to Walmart and they go to the, you know, these big mega stores and then they're watching football and then they're, I just see their life to me as just, um, I can't be around them because it's not, 
it's just not wholesome and spiritually filling and organic and the type of, of thing, life that is whole and cool and loving and of my 100% true self. And so I hang out with those folks because I, I love them or I want to be connected to them, but I'm, I'm really empty, emptying out myself because that's kind of contagious in a way and I, I don't want to be in that energy because it's not in my belief system. You know, it's hard to say, well, you don't want to hang out with certain people because you can't judge people by, um, like football, for example. But the thing is, is it really bothers me physically to just to sit for hours and hours, even in a house where football is going. And people are yelling at it, and that's their God. And I'd rather be praying or playing a game or re uh, reading or laughing or connecting with somebody personally and not, um, not being in that energy. Um, whatever your belief system is, uh, that's where you need to be. Just remembering that who you hang out with, their energy is contagious to you. Don't sabotage yourself by unwittingly adopting negativity, negative unproductive attitudes through your association with others. If you encounter a downhearted friend or a grieving parent or a colleague who has suffered a sudden reversal of fortune, be careful not to be overcome yourself by the apparent misfortune. Remember to discriminate between events themselves and our interpretation of them. Remind yourself what hurts this person is not the occurrence itself. For another person might not feel oppressed by the situation at all. What is hurting this person is the response he or she has uncritically adopted. It is not a demonstration of kindness or friendship to the people we care about to join them in indulging in wrong-headed negative feelings. We do a better service to ourselves and others by remaining detached and avoiding melodramatic reactions. Still, if you find yourself in conversation with someone who is depressed, hurt, or frustrated, show them kindness and give them a sympathetic ear. Just don't allow yourself to be pulled down too. So, and when you're around those same people all the time, you know, you kind of have to eventually fade away from them because, you know, if, I find that people that ask me for advice quite often, they just like to dump their problems, but they don't want any solution at all. And I myself do that sometimes too. If like people are like, well, why don't you look at it this way? Why don't you look at it that way? Well, sometimes I reject that, but most of the time I seek um, from others, you know. I spiritually counsel people, but I also seek spiritually counseling. And so, but when you are really in a, a slump where you cannot make those positive changes, it's hard to be around those people. Even as a spiritual counselor, there's only so far you can go. If they're not making these changes, you know, you have to move on. Someone else has to try to help them or something like that. But um, when you're around people who, you know, this friend, she ate, she ate organic for years and years and years and was really um, getting healthy and and an old friend visited for like three months and she started eating crap and eating out and eating foods like she used to and she started getting just sicker and sicker and and the thing is is that um, you hope that you know the healthier eating influences you or the healthier lifestyle or the person that walks but a lot, sometimes you get into these situations where no it's the opposite you go back to junk food you, do, you don't watch you walk you just sit around and then um, whatever it is, you're influencing that person. You have to be able to sit back and go, okay, where am I at right now? What's influencing me? Who am I around? Am I around people that are, that I want to be, uh, that are inspiring me to, to walk, to eat healthy, to eat organic, to live a certain way? Or um, am I around people who do just the opposite? And you don't want to sit around judging people and being negative in their life. You want to be a positive force. So you just have to remove yourself from them if that's not the way of life that you want. Anyway, that was a long story, made me roll my eyes. Okay, no one can hurt you. People don't have the power to hurt you. Even if someone shouts abuse at you or strikes you, even if you are insulted, it is always your choice to view what is happening as insulting or not. If someone irritates you, it's only your own response that is irritating you. Therefore, when anyone seems to be provoking you, remember that it is only your judgment of the incident that provokes you. Don't let your emotions get ignited by mere appearance. Try not to merely react to the moment. Pull back from the situation as I'm pulling back. Take a wider view and compose yourself. And then you can make the decision of, well, I don't really want to be around this person anymore. And make the healthy choices to stop being around people that you don't feel good around.
okay? Because your body is your pendulum, your body is your guide. If something doesn't feel right to you, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if they're your kids or, you know, your parents or you might feel obligated, and I'm not talking about like underage kids, but adult kids that sometimes judge their parents and they're oppressive, you have friends that are oppressive or, you know, and if you're in a job situation, you know, so many people just, they just tolerate situations because they feel they have to do that. Well, you might have to do it for a short period of time, but you visualize and pray and ask for help and ask for a direction out of it and then move out of that. Don't just think that's the way it is forever and just sit there in a life you don't want, complaining and creating more negativity. How many people, just so many people I know now are just, they feel so stuck in jobs that they don't want and, and they say that they have no way out and I, I, you know, I don't get it. And people that don't have adult children or their children are grown and they still feel like, well, I have to stay at this job or that job or I have to do this or that because I still want to help take care of my children or I, or I'm going to stay in this relationship and I don't really like the person, but I'm going to stay there because that's what I feel I have to do. They trap themselves, but then they come to me for spiritual counseling and they tell me about how oppressed they are like by their partner, but they won't leave um, for a multitude of reasons, for years and years and years. They don't want to be there, but they won't make a change. All right. <laughs> Seeking to please others is a perilous trap. In trying to please others, we find ourselves misdirected towards what lies outside our sphere of influence. In doing so, we lose our hold on our life's purpose. Content yourself with being a lover of wisdom, a seeker of the truth. Return and return again to what is essential and worthy. Do not try to seem wise to others. If you want to live a wise life, live it in your own terms and in your own eyes. And that is the hardest thing for everyone to do. They know how they want to live, they know what their belief systems are, but they don't have the nerve to live it because they think that everyone in their life will judge them and will essentially shun them. But God, Goddess, the Great Spirit didn't send you here to please everybody else. You're not of man, you're not of this earth, you're of spirit. You came here to do something and that is inspired by your bliss by what you want to be doing, what you truly feel good about. It doesn't, it's, you didn't come here to just be oppressed and oppress yourself waiting, well one day I'll have more money, well, one day we'll get along better, 